IEEC warns importers to abide by PNG laws. Benga School of Nursing holds first graduation in Wabeg. And PNGDF displays urban operation skills. This is the National MTV News with Mary Bartolo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us for Thursday's news. The Independent Consumer and Competition Commission has warned all importers in the country to follow laws and regulations or else face the full force of the law. Commissioner Paulus Ayn says they will penalize importers who do not cooperate. Now you see this too? They, they look exactly the same. They look exactly the same. But one is a genuine one. One is a counterfeit one. From inspections, retail shops are still selling counterfeit and expired fake products with known English labels. We would now like to remind our good importers, manufacturers in this country, they should now stop the practice that is going on in this industry. We know them, we have the context, but we do not want to expose and destroy the corporate limits in this country. Despite efforts in enforcing its consumer protection work, many products are still being sold. IEEC is introducing an interim ban using provisions of the Food Sanitation Act and Food Sanitation Regulation to protect consumers. IEEC's Consumer Protection Division, as part of the monitoring and the enforcement, is liaising with other key stakeholders and regulators to enforce permanent bans and uh, interim bans on uh, non-English label products and uh, the banned products would be looking at uh, the, I, I guess the banned products that we've imposed. While some trends are gradually developing, IEEC is educating manufacturers, importers and distributors to comply with PNG laws. The focus is now on consumers and the public is to report any counterfeit goods found in shops. All goods with non-English labels are banned. It only ad addresses five key elements and that is, for example, the ingredients uh, should be in English so that the consumers can make an informed decision whether the content is uh, something that they can consume. Uh, it talks about the name of the packer distributor or the uh, importer it needs to be in English and likewise their address has to be in English and the country of origin of that product so we know where it's coming from. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the net weight of the product. Resource constraints is a challenge but IEEC will continue work within its powers together with key stakeholders to ensure products purchased are safe and fit for public consumption. We have two prone approach. We can prosecute and we can do an education and awareness approach to it. So what we've been doing so far is, if you like, it's the soft approach in getting businesses, importers and traders to understand the requirement of this particular interior. So what we are now doing is we're stepping up in terms of our awareness, getting every our people to understand you know, the bans and the non-English labels and all the stuff. We would like to ask you if you could work with us and expose some of this practice in our shops, in our outlets, so that we can at least put a stop to this practice in this country. Fabian Hacklitz, National MTV News. The World Health Organization is working closely with Papua New Guinea's health department for proper regulations on counterfeit medicines. While counterfeit medicines remain a global issue, WHO country representative Dr. Lo Dapeng says they have to address this to ensure medicines can only be taken on advice from health professionals. The health department has also reviewed the Medicine and Cosmetic Act 1999 to address counterfeit medicinal drugs under its Strategic National Health Plan of 2011 to 2020. The sale of counterfeit medicines has reached greater volumes, making 50% of the global drug market with a significant proportion of fake products in developing countries. Dr. Luo Dapeng says a registry system has been developed to clamp down on counterfeit medicines entering the country through main entry points. PNG has been on the wrong end of a flourishing medical drug black market 
with indications that the syndicate has already established itself in the formal health system. Medical drugs have gone missing, leading to health facilities running out of vital medicines. With support of the partner, including WHO, to address this issue, start with a regulation, a registration system. I think the system is on the way, and we are developing the system. The World Health Organization has appealed to consumers to seek proper consultation with medical professionals and a warning to consumers not to purchase medicines peddled on the street. So they, they will, you have a better chance to get a proper medicine and a proper, proper dosage for, for, the, for you to, to provide uh, adequate services. Dr. Dapeng says the government's role is to protect people's lives and the registry system will help to save lives. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill in early reports also called for government departments and line agencies to step up monitoring and prevalence on substandard counterfeit and illegal products. We will be following the lead and, and assisting them where our competence is required. So I think it would be a, a relevant question for the lead agency to answer. Uh, but as far as uh, we're concerned, uh, we've not uh, progressed this matter as yet. Fabian Hacklitz, National MTV News. After more than a decade of its closure, the Enga School of Nursing held a graduation ceremony yesterday in Wabag. Thirteen female nurses graduated with diplomas in general nursing and were offered their nursing registry licenses. Health Secretary Pasco Kase and PNG Nursing Council Registrar Dr. Nina Joseph officiated at the ceremony. The graduation marks a historical hallmark for Enga School of Nursing after years of closure due to tribal warfare. On October 28, 2014, Sopas Nursing College was rebranded as the Enga School of Nursing and for the first time enrolled 45 students. However, Pioneer Principal Noilin Koitalo says due to the school's curriculum standard, a lot of students dropped out, leaving 13 female students to complete the three-year general nursing program. To promote everything in of, as a matter of priority standard. The curriculum and the program offered at the Enga School of Nursing are sanctioned by the Department of Health. However, Secretary Kase warned the college to uphold its integrity and not to compromise patient safety. Kase told the graduates that there are many positions for nurses available in the country and he guaranteed them that they will find a job soon. I know that this college sets the standards very high and the health department encourages them as we cannot compromise patient safety. Enga Governor Sir Peter Ipatas encouraged parents to send their children to institutions in Enga province rather than wasting money to send them to other schools in the country. Sir Peter says Enga people should take pride in the institutions in the province and build them. The graduation yesterday was an impact project of Wabek Open MP Dr. Lino Tom when he was a surgical doctor at Sopas Hospital before he contested for the 2017 national election. Dr. Lino wrote to seek funding to rebuild the then Sopas Nursing College. Enga governor then stepped in and funded over 18 million kina to date under the Provincial Improvement Program Fund and rebuild the college. On national institutions, on tertiary institutions, and prerogative power, and responsibility from the national government of Egypt. The college has embarked on a new program by affiliating with Pacific Adventist University. Enga Nursing College students will take a bachelor in nursing at PAU after completing their three-year diploma courses. PAU will also manage the nursing college. Vasinata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. Yeah, with National MTV News, we'll have more stories after these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. Exercise Pukpuk Puk 2017 concluded today with the establishment of new infrastructure and enhancement training of soldiers from the PNG Defence Force. 
The six-week exercise in, is an annual military program jointly delivered by two selected engineering battalions from the PNG and Australian Defence Forces. Soldiers from the 1st Pacific Islands Regiment were the host of this year's exercise. The exercise concluded this morning with a farewell parade consisting of three companies of soldiers, both from PNGDF and ADF. The exercise is designed in a way that if, it, if, it's an, if it's an activity that will only require Australian input, it's crept off. So every activity that is designed, it is conducted within exercise book, it's an activity that includes an Australian hand and a PNG engineer, engineer uh, soldier hand. So they work together and build infrastructures, not only that, but provide mentorism as well. Through this exercise, a regimental aid post and accommodation facility were established for military personnel. Commanding officer of 1RPIR, Lieutenant Colonel Boniface Aruma, outlined the initiatives that were established during Exercise Pukpuk 2017. They built an infrastructure capable of holding 120 men. That was a facility that was built hand in hand together with Australian engineers and our PNG Defence Force engineers. In the end, that infrastructure contributes, adds a lot of training value, an immense amount of training value to the PNG Defence Force because that infrastructure alone now gives one RPI the capability to house or to accommodate all the force elements that, that are going to come from all the units of the PNG Defence Force in the country. Chief of Force Preparations, Colonel Sialadiro, acknowledged soldiers from ADF's brigade unit and congratulated soldiers from 1RPIR in successfully carrying out Exercise Pukpuk 2017. He also highlighted key developments which the exercise had brought about, stating it is in preparation for security operations come 2018. You can see what this exercise Pukuki does. It's not just about building infrastructure. It's about building infrastructure that will add value to the training of our soldiers. Not for now, but for the future as well. Exercise Pukpuk 2017 is just one of the many military programs 1RPIR is carrying out in building its capacity to support the PNG Defense Force in security operations for APEC. Teklagunga, National MTV News. A platoon from the Papua New Guinea Defence Force has staged a mock building clearance exercise to demonstrate their skills after completing urban operation training. This morning they engaged in a mock gun battle where the platoon moved in and cleared a number of buildings in an urban setting. The drill was witnessed by senior members of the PNGDF and ADF including Chief of Force Operations Colonel Sialadiro. This was one of the training programs conducted during exercise Pukpuk 2017. The platoon, consisting of at least 30 soldiers, quietly moved into the targeted area and waited for the commander to give the OK to attack their enemy. The unit on the hill were the first to attack, causing destruction, while the second unit on the ground moved in. When the second unit started engaging in a gun battle with the enemy, a third unit moved in quietly on the other side of the hill in preparation to support the second unit. During the gun battle between the first unit and the enemy, a member of the platoon was shot. The drill demonstrates how medical soldiers attend to injured soldiers and repatriated them to safety. The drill continued with the third unit providing fire support and smoke distractions to confuse their enemy. The exercise is conducted in an urban setting 
because most battles are now fought in towns and cities. It is designed to give soldiers an insight into possible obstacles and how to identify quickly safe spots and how to quickly identify safe spots to move in, clear buildings and move out with zero casualties. The drill marks the opening of the urban operations training facility. There that can allow us to do stability operations training. So stability operations training is basically, you know, it trains our soldiers to train inside urban environment, built up areas, how to enter buildings, clear buildings. Um, this is the first time for such a facility to be established on military ground and will be used for further PNG Defence Force trainings. The urban operations training facility, that's the one that you guys just down there witnessing. That operations training facility gives us uh, a capability where we don't need to run out and you know, go and secure the APEC house, for example, or the convention center, for example. It cuts out all those you know, bureaucratic red tape in the middle. We, we can just have our own facility go down and do our training here. And Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. Preparations for the APEC meeting have begun with firefighters conducting training drills in Lei today. The drill was to assess the fitness of firefighters in preparation for 2018 APEC. Lei Fire Station Superintendent Balkena says they have limited resources but want to be prepared to meet developments. The firefighters began with this exercise. It was conducted to assess the fitness of the firefighters. Handling of ladder was also part of the exercise as it is important to know how to handle and use ladders when rescuing a victim from fire. This roof was used as a second floor of a building where the firefighters attended to a victim unconscious and trapped inside the building. We are team leaders, there a team, a search and rescue team, they went up uh, second floor by using the ladder. There are currently 14 firefighters in Lei, including two women. Janet Noah has been working as a firefighter in Lei for seven years. She has attended to a number of fire emergency cases. The one at the airport, that my first fire call that I have attended, the major fires. The second one, I have Brian Bell, they take. The firefighters in Lei have been practicing the drill since January this year. The superintendent for Lei Fire Station, Balkana, says, despite the limited resources, the firefighters want to be prepared to meet today's developments. The training will help firefighters to be skillful to attend to emergencies effectively. We're trying to do our best to use what little resources we have. You know, we've gone through all the challenges, but I cannot be able to elaborate. But this by this, we are trying to use what we have. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. The Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary says it is one step closer to addressing issues of police housing in the Northern Command with the groundbreaking of the Gusap Police Barracks in Ramu. The new barracks and training facility will be funded by New Britain Palm Oil's Ramu Agri Industries through the tax credit scheme costing 5 million kina. Police Commissioner Gary Baki says the facilities will also be used in preparation towards APEC in 2018. The barracks area was filled with police officers this morning. The local officers from Gusap, Lei and the mobile squad units were all present as they awaited the police commissioner's arrival. After giving his keynote address, the police commissioner, Gary Baki, was given the honor of conducting the groundbreaking. The project is being built to accommodate the Northern Command's mobile squad. We do not have any more opportunity to build any additional, uh, sorry, to develop our uh, rebuild any more new mobile squads because we have no accommodation. So the whole idea is to have a barracks that can accommodate a group, a mobile group properly. 
This will address the issues of housing faced by these officers. Once we've done that, then it will free up a lot of accommodation in the, in the existing uh, barracks. The project is being funded by the New Britain Palm Oil through the government's tax credit scheme and will cost 5 million kina. The company will be supporting the project by using our own staff for the construction of the housing and the infrastructure on site. The Gusa Police Barracks is expected to be completed by August next year. The facilities built will include 13 low-set houses, one high-set house, two 15-man barracks, a classroom and an office. The training facilities will also be used in preparation towards the 2018 APEC meeting. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Gusa. Taking a look at the finance news now, the Kino closed unchanged at 0.312 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kino was buying 0.3045 US dollars, 0.3874 Australian dollars, 0.255 Euro, and 34.34 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading lower, copper closed higher, while coffee and cocoa closed lower. Palm oil closed unchanged, crude oil is trading lower, while copper closed higher. And on the stock markets, the Dow Jones closed 112 points lower, the ASX 10 points higher, and the All Ordinaries 9 points higher. Yo, with Thursday's news, more stories on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Port Moresby police are treating the body of a man discovered in the Treasury building as a homicide case. The Treasury Department was closed down yesterday after the discovery of the corpse in the building's air conditioning exhaust vent. Police are now waiting for search warrants to commence investigations. Yesterday, the Treasury Department was closed down and staff were asked to leave as the building manager and authorities arrived to retrieve the dead body. It is believed it had been there for a few days. According to staff, there was foul smell coming from the basement's vent. The police, fire department and St. John's were on site at the Treasury Department, but because of the condition the body was in, it took three hours to retrieve the body. Around 4 p.m., the ambulance was seen leaving the building with a body bag inside the vehicle under police escort. Port Mosby police said they're waiting for search warrants to conduct investigations into the incident. Meanwhile, relatives of a missing IBS student who was last seen at a nearby nightclub has identified the body as the missing son. The deceased is a 23-year-old male from Gulf and Central Province. Prior to the discovery of the body, family members posted on social media about their son who had been missing for four days. Merlin Diakotam, National MTV News. Recent deaths involving students has raised concerns on parenting. General Secretary of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands, Father Victor Roche, has urged parents and guardians to be cautious of their children's whereabouts. He said, life is a gift from God and it's our responsibility to look after ourselves and our children. Recent events involving students has raised concerns on the level of parenting in the country. Last week, a University of Papua New Guinea student died in a car accident. Just yesterday, the body of another university student was found at the National Treasury Office in Port Mosby. It's, it seems that it's a, it's a tradition that when they finish their exams, they have to celebrate. They have to go on a drinking spree. And what the moral value that you have given to these students, this is not right. This is not right. The responsibility is first, it is the responsibility of the parents. Parents should make sure that they come home, that they don't celebrate in a wild way. This student deaths have signaled other students to take control of their lives and be safety cautious. Oh, boy, what, where are we? Are we in a civilized world? No, please, students, control yourselves. You can celebrate because you have, you have finished your exams, but there should be a limit and there should be somebody who can really control them and should not go on a drinking spree and you, sh you know that you don't 
you are not able to control yourself when you are drunk so please stop drinking to an excess level and please control your anger and be good students and good citizens make us proud by behaving as good students however father victor says the responsibility remains with parents you know i i on this uh, note i see that the people the students are not to be blamed completely the parents are to be blamed parents should know what exactly their children are doing and they do not have a control so please parents you make sure that you as your children they come home and they behave well and when they are out of home you should know what they are doing and what they are up to feben hakrets The Family and Sexual Violence Action Committee in NCD today presented its gender-based violence data collected from April 2016 to April 2017. The data was presented to Governor Poa Spako. Governor Pako said the rate at which violence against women in the country is reaching horrific levels and men as mostly perpetrators must be a part of the solution if this issue is to be dealt with. While work on addressing gender-based violence in Port Moresby is progressing with many stakeholders, NCD Governor Powers Pakop questioned whether their work is producing results. Pakop made this remark during the gender-based violence data presentation by NCDC Family Sexual Violence Actions Committee today. He said violence against women and girls have come to a point where it is horrific and perpetrators are getting away. When the report in itself is good, there are so many things that are not said and I have sense which must alert all of us to, you know, to take serious thought as to how far we've come and what we have to do for the future. I note, uh, for example, that uh, most of the achievement that we have recorded here, that we all have put together, mainly capacity building. So that's an achievement in itself, but doesn't say much about the service we are provide, providing and whether it's been successful one year on, and what the real challenges are going forward into the future. Parkop challenged various stakeholders during the presentation that they have to work together to reduce or eliminate violence altogether in the country. The gender-based violence data presented for NCD showed most of the cases reported of violence are against adult women where perpetrators are mainly men who are their intimate partners. NCDC FSVAC manager Ruth Barrisel, who presented the data, said many of the perpetrators have reported more than one incident and most of these cases involve sexual penetration, which leaves the survivors with psychological and emotional distress. Pakop encouraged stakeholders to look back at their objectives and work harder to eradicate violence in the city. He said violence against women only reflects bad behavior and value systems of men and the only way to deal with the problem is to involve men in the programs and monitor all reported cases so that people can change their mentality. We must have a goal in which we are going to reduce gender-based violence and ideally, if possible, it can be done in this world eliminating. There is high respect between men and women, everybody working together, partners are choosing to get out each other to live together or to exceed at their free will if they can't live together. Stacy Yalo, National MTV News. 19 joint officer cadets from the Papua New Guinea Defence Force, Police and the Correctional Service will be graduating tomorrow from the Joint Forces College in Leh. This will be the first graduation in 37 years since the institution was downgraded in 1918. As part of its development plans, the college will be looking at getting intakes from Melanesian spearhead group countries. Final preparations today at Lay's Egam Barracks. Tomorrow, 19 Joint Officer Cadets from the Papua New Guinea Defence Force, the Police and Correctional Service will graduate. It will be the first in 37 years since the Joint Forces College was closed in 1980. For Commandant Colonel Carl Rakone, the prospects of growth and improvements in national security are looking good, but funding remains their biggest obstacle. The first phase, which is six, initial six months, is um, joint training, basic recruit training. And then the initial second six months, they go into uh, focusing on junior leadership and uh, minor tactics. And we also uh, teach uh, some very general uh, CS and military, uh, CS and police um, 
uh, subjects as well. Many of the older officers in positions of command, including Police Commissioner Gary Bucky, were trained in the previous Joint Forces College. Like every other government agency today, funding remains a big challenge. Even after the opening of the college two years ago, they've had to struggle to secure regular funding. There are plans to invite cadets from other Pacific Island countries to train at IGAM. The concept is to get a collection of cadets from various different agencies in different countries to undergo the same kind of training so they speak the same language. So after graduation, we have encouraged them. After graduation, when they go to the respective uh, institutions, particular three discipline forces, they have to use, think the word joint. So when they grow up in their, their, their ranks in the, in the respective um, institutions, it's just a matter of if somebody is uh, lagging in certain uh, logistical um, issues or even mobility in terms of transport or, or other equipment. It's just a matter of somebody picking up the phone and calling his mate. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, Lay. While Papua New Guineans are opting to raise or save money to celebrate the festive season and prepare for school fees in the new year, Telecom PNG is giving away a total of 100,000 kina from November the 3rd to February 2018. Each week, 1,000 kina will be given away to customers who top up with Telecom's right prepaid of 20 kina and above. The cash promotion event was launched today at the Telecom Romana building in Port Moresby. Present on behalf of Telecom PNG Management to launch the 100,000 Kina Cares promotion event today was Telecom's National Retail Manager Amos Tepi, Acting General Manager Marketing BBN Barring, and Manager Tech Marketing and New Product Kony Alone. Telecom National Retail Manager Amos Tepi speaking during the launch says, despite 2017 being a challenging year, this is a way forward to connect customers to Telecom's 4G and other products. To um, get this 100,000 giveaway for uh, coming Christmas, uh, school fees for parents who are struggling out there. Um, and we know that people who are planning to go out for Christmas, they need something to uh, take. So we want to appreciate that and give this back to our customers, loyal customers who are saving and using our service 4G and other products as well. This promotion complements the launch of the 4G service and will commence in November all the way through to February 2018. The case promotion will be drawn every Friday and 1,000 Kina case will be given away starting next month on November 3rd. A total of 100,000 Kina case will be given away. We done weekly and we'll draw five lucky winners. And that's not just for our mobile service, but also we've got our ADSL, our GPON, our WiMAX services. So all our prepaid class of service, the promotion applies across those prepaid um, class of service. So 1,000 kina to be drawn for each winner and a total of five winners on a weekly basis. So again, the promotion will run from October in 2017 all the way through to February of um, 2018. Apparently, this is a good time for customers to appreciate Telecom's 4G services with a reward of a thousand kina in return. So customers should start looking at buying 20 kina right prepaid cards. Everyone, regardless of whether you're an existing uh, telecommunication service provider or a new one, is, is mandated by law to ensure that you sign off your customers with a valid visa ID. So that doesn't mean that we'll stop next year. It continues. Erika Rupma, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after these messages with True Guy Sports. We'll be back with the sporting action after these messages. Welcome to Trukai Sports. To the Rugby League World Cup, Wales captain Craig Kobzak is determined his team can continue their winning record against the PNG Kumuls. He says the team has been preparing well and are looking forward to the first match. 
Team Wales arrived in Port Moresby yesterday afternoon and are settling in well. It's the first time for the players to visit PNG and are still getting used to the humidity. As soon as we stepped off the plane, the heat just hit you straight away and it, it, um, it took us by surprise really because we didn't uh, realise how hot it actually was. Um, coming from Brisbane, we thought that was hot, but we've uh, not experienced anything like this before. Wales captain Craig Kopzek says the team has prepared well for the World Cup and is looking forward to the match this weekend. The team is made up of many players from the Super League with a handful from the NRL. Myself uh, and um, a few others uh, from the Super League. Uh, we've got a few playing in the, the lower leagues below, uh, but some of them have uh, experience uh, of playing in the Super League as well. So, yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a mixed balance of uh, the talent. Uh, we've also got a few young boys for, who play in the, in the NRL as well. They look to continue their impressive winning record against the Kumuls this weekend. You know, we're in a tournament, uh, we want to win the group as well, so in order to do that we need to, to win every game, um, starting with PNG. But um, just looking back, I was, I was in the 2007 game uh, over in Bridge End in Wales. Uh, that was my uh, debut game as well, uh, I remember that very well. Uh, very hard, very tough game. Um, but PNG have come a long way since then uh, and they've got a very talented squad. So. It's up to us um, you know, to, to go out there and uh, hopefully spoil your party. <laughs> the team visited Vision City and Corbusier International School and were amazed at the passion of rugby league shown by the locals. Yeah, yeah it was a really good morning. I uh, went into the mall and meeting the local people and I'm just, just astounded by the passion that, that, that's around the place with rugby league. And when we went out and about, we've seen loads of kids just on the streets playing rugby league. There's not a football in sight, which is great to see. Uh, there's so many people that are playing it and it's only great for, for PNG in the future of rugby league. Wales will play the PNG Kumuls on Saturday at the National Football Stadium at 3pm. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. To cricket, the CPL PNG Lewis have yet another big event on their 2018 calendar and that is the ICC Women's World T20 Qualifier in the Netherlands. The International Cricket Council announced the host nation yesterday, with the Lewis now having only seven months to prepare as much as they can. The PNG Lewis qualified for next year's ICC Women's World T20 qualifier after winning the ICC Women's World T20 East Asia Pacific qualifier in Japan earlier this year. The Lawas also competed in the last ICC Women's World T20 qualifier in Thailand in 2015 where they won the plate trophy. Now with the dates and the host country of the Women's World T20 qualifiers confirmed yesterday by the ICC, the Lawas will compete in the A-team tournament in the second of the two groups of four competition format. After the group stages, the two top teams will proceed to the trophy final and the final contest for a sport in the World Cup. And in both groups, there will be semi-finals, finals and ranking matches. That means each will be playing five matches regardless of their finishing ranks. For the Lawas, despite falling short of a strong finish in last year's World Cup, they will this time fight for a World Cup sport again. Training has been ongoing for them since returning from the East Asia Pacific qualifiers in Sano, Japan. And gaining successful entry to the World Cup once more would mean they get another chance to vie for a one-day international status. Dinero Strico National and TV Sports. You're watching Trukai Sports. We'll be back with more after these messages. Stay tuned. True Kai Sports. Welcome back to True Kai Sports. To football now, Papua New Guinea Youth International Emmanuel Simongi is realizing his football dreams at the Oceania Football Confederation Education Centre. The 17-year-old believes his football and academic development has improved significantly since returning to the OFC Education Centre in New Zealand. To fill up what subjects should I take? Emmanuel Simongi is one of the four student athletes who have returned for a second year at the OFC Education Center, which the Confederation oversees in collaboration with One Tree Hill College in Penrose, Auckland. Since I came, I've been learning a lot of good things in and out of the pitch. And yeah, I'm doing good at school and football as well. The 17-year-old made his international debut for Papua New Guinea earlier this year 
in the OFC Under-17 Championship, helping his side to the semi-finals. And although he enjoyed the experience, it did make him question his talent. To be honest, I went back because uh, there's a lot of good boys and then I thought I would miss out for the spot again. But I was selected again to come back here. Yeah, it was good. I think I've gained um, more confidence to like play high, uh, high pressure football. Yeah, I think confidence is one of the things I've learned. Simongi said it is important to him to keep proving he deserves his place by putting his all into achieving both on and off the field. Compared to uh, PNG, I think uh, the competition here is uh, the standard is high. So it's a good thing I've learned so many things playing with the school team. One thing in particular Simongi has realized is the opportunity to join the school's first 11. In my life, I never played football. So like playing football in international level like this is a, a good thing for me. It's a new experience for me. The full story of this football prodigy will feature on MTV Sports Talk Show, Sporting, on Monday at 8 p.m. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. And that ends Trukai Sports. We'll have for you a quick look at the weather after these messages. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Here's a quick look at the weather in the southern region, Port Mosby and Daru, some showers and thunderstorms, rain in Kerama as well, some showers for Alotau and Popandeta. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield, with doing with Dulux. And that ends National MTV News for today, Thursday the 26th of October. Join us at a special time of 5.30pm tomorrow for the news that's due to our coverage of the 2017 Rugby League World Cup. Until 5.30pm tomorrow, bye for now.